So <laughs> this question says, a rock with some mass, uh, let me just start by labeling things, with some mass in air is found to have an apparent mass of different value when submerged in water. Oh, I think there are different ways to do it. Um, let me do it a little bit differently than um, how it might be done. Um, let me just directly use Archimedes principle. So this is what Archimedes principle says. Archimedes principle, which by the way, we do drive in lecture. Um, but I'm just going to use the principle because the way it's worded, I think we can use it more directly than we would by using buoyancy force and all that stuff. Archimedes principle says that the buoyancy force on a submerged object is equal to the weight of fluid displaced. And the reason I want to use this principle is because it gives us the answer to the first question just directly. What mass of water is it displaced? Well, the principle gives the weight of the water displaced, but um, um, we can figure, we, without doing unnecessary calculation, we can figure out what mass corresponds to the weight. So um, we have a rock which is measured with some mass, usually by weighing it. And um, as it's uh, in water, it's uh, found to have a different apparent mass, again, found by weighing it. And so we can say that the weight of water displaced is the difference um, or weight corresponding to the difference between these two. So when we work it back, to what mass of water we are displacing, that would be just difference between these two. So 560 minus 325, that's uh, 235 grams. That's how much water is displaced. And once you get that first answer, then the uh, rest, uh, we can actually do it just with uh, our knowledge of physical world and the definition of density. So we do define density as this. Density is equal to mass per volume. So where it asks, what is the volume of the rock? Well, we know how much mass of water it displaced. So we can use this expression, solve it for volume, and say the volume of the thing that the rock displaced assuming the rock is completely submerged, which it sounds like it might be, the volume uh, displaced is equal to mass of the thing that's displaced divided by density of the thing that's displaced. Now, I do happen to remember density of water in this nice unit of gram per cubic centimeter as a one gram per cubic centimeter. This is something special about water. That's how we define gram. So, um, so the volume of the rock must be oh, this much gram, this many grams, divided by one gram per cubic centimeter. That'll basically just to change the unit of gram to cubic centimeter. I'm just muting my phone. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's it. So um, I think the volume of the rock is the same number as long as you write it in, in cubic centimeter because the density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. So once you have the volume of the rock, then for the last question, it's a matter of just uh, using this relationship again to figure out the density. We have the mass, and we have the mass of the rock in air, which ought to be close to its uh, its mass uh, as measured in vacuum. So I'm just going to use that, 560 grams, um, divided by its uh, volume that we found in part B as 235. Um, but yeah, let me do that in a calculator. So 560 divided by 235. I'm putting that dot there because a sage mass uh, it prefers to do exact number calculations, so it'll do that thing. Um, putting that period there uh, forces you to do decimal approximation calculation. 
So the at the average density of the rock must be 2.38 gram per cubic centimeter. 0.38. All right. Um, that's it. Yeah. So this question we uh, did it in a bit of an unusual way. Uh, we did it basically the same way the ancient Greeks could have uh, if they had to define the unit of gram. But you know they can also use other unit of mass that they might have had back then. So. so.